Now, I love working with tools like Advanced Custom Fields, Jet Engine, and so on. And one of the things I've always wanted to be able to do is use conditional logic to show and hide various different things. Up until now, that's not been that easy to do with lots of limitations. But this free plugin changes all of that. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how Dynamic Conditions works. So dynamic conditions are, by their very nature, very, very simple. In this example, it's either going to show something or it's going to hide something. But what adds the extra power to it is the ability to choose what the trigger is to actually show and hide. So we can use a trigger on one part of the page to show and hide something on another part of the page. So in our example, we're going to take a look at how we can use a location to show or hide a map. So if we have an empty field for the location, the map won't display. It's a very simple example, but it should demonstrate how to use dynamic conditions. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful and powerful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so dynamic conditions. The first thing we need to do is go and download this free plugin. I've already gone ahead and done that, and I've already installed it, ready to start showing you how to use it. So once you go through the process of downloading and installing Dynamic Conditions, you'll see it in your plugin section, but there are no settings to worry about tweaking or editing. Once you load in Elementor, you'll see in the Advanced section, we now have a new panel, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Now, I'm using Jet Engine for this example. I've created a custom post type, and all I've done is add in some additional fields for things like an event date, an event location, a price, and a couple of other things. Now, you could use this with advanced custom fields, you could use it with pods, you can use it with anything that allows you to put dynamic data in. And this is where the real power of this comes in. So once we've done that, next thing I've done is I've already created a template to display our events. So if I just jump over into the template section, into Theme Builder, you'll see there's my event single. So this will just display the actual single details of each of our events. If we come into Edit with Elementor, we can take a look at what I've done. Now, like I say, it's a very simple example. We've got our featured image, we've got the title of the event itself, a description and the event details, and below that, we've then got a map. Now, this map is just pulling the data from the location, so we can use these to sort of populate all the, the various different bits and pieces of the page. Okay, so with that in place, what we're going to do is use a very simple example of choosing that if this event location details are empty, this map will then be hidden. Because the last we want is an empty map that would look kind of strange. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up that simple trigger. So it's very easy to do. What we're going to do is click on the actual piece of information that we want. In this case, it's the map. So once we've selected the map, this is now going to be the thing that's going to show or hide. Jump over to the Advanced tab, and you can see we have an entry called Dynamic Conditions. Expand that out, and we've got three simple things we can do. We've got the Dynamic Tag, in other words, the trigger. We've got the condition, which is just simply to show or hide something when a condition is met. And then we have the actual condition itself. So let's just open up the dynamic field. Now you can see that we've got tons of pieces of information in there. We can pull any sort of information in from the post, from the archive, from the site, from the media. And if we scroll right the way down to the bottom, you can see in my example, I've got Jet Engine in there. But obviously, if you were using something like ACF or Pods, they would be listed there in the place of Jet Engine, but you could still access those dynamically created fields that you've set up. So we can use any of these things now as a trigger to do something. So we're going to say that we want a custom field. Once we select that, you can see it now pops and says, what custom field do you want to use? Click and expand, and you see there's the three custom fields that I've set up all inside Jet Engine, date, price, and location. So we're going to choose the location. That's the first thing done. So we've now set the actual trigger. Next, we're going to set up what happens. You can see we've got the option to show when condition is met or hide when the condition is met. It doesn't matter which way around you use this as long as the condition below it actually sets up correctly. So, for example, if we say we want to hide this, we need to come down to the condition and we can say that in the custom field, if the event location is empty, we want it to hide the map. So we can say is empty and that's our condition set up. So very, very simple. We can click on update and that will now set up the condition. Now obviously the map is going to show up at the moment because we actually have some data inside the event location. But if we take that out of there, we should then find that the map disappears. So let's try that. Let's just come out of our template, exit back to our dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back up to our event post type, edit our event 
and we're just going to simply come in and remove that location information. So we're going to take out the location, update our post. So we now have that field being empty. And if we jump back into our templates and we just take a look under the theme builder. So we click to edit with Elementor. We open that up. And you'll see then that even though the placeholder is in place, it's still showing there, there's no actual map showing up. If you want to see that actually in action, if we just jump over to a test page, you can see there's the details. And if we look, because the event location is empty, the map and all that section at the bottom is now completely removed. So we can do the same thing again for the event location to make sure that that's also empty. What we need to do, come back in, and we're just simply going to come over to this particular field, select it, do the same thing again, jump on the Advanced tab, down to Dynamic Conditions, we're going to come back in, scroll right the way down to our Jet Engine, Custom Fields, select our location. Once we've done that, we can then come back out of this, hide when condition is met, and we'll just say is empty. Hit Update. And we just jump back over now to our test page and refresh this. Because that's empty, you can see it's now removed from within our template structure. And if, if we go back in, so we just come back in just to check that's all working. We'll exit from our template, come back into our event itself, and we'll change the actual details on this. So instead of it being Cardiff this time, we'll do something like London, hit update, refresh our sample page. And you see there's our information back and also our map is back in there as well. So it's very, very simple to use, but you can see just by using some very simple conditions, we can easily set up multiple areas on our page that all have to meet that condition or they'll be hidden away or displayed if the condition is met. Might sound like a really simple thing, but once you tie this into dynamic information through advanced custom fields, jet engine, pods and so on, you have an incredibly powerful way of being able to create great looking sites with tons of information. Tie that into the theme builder that's part of Elementor and you can get really powerful websites pushing the boundaries of what you can do straight out of the box with WordPress without having to touch any of that underlying code. And that's really all there is to it. There's tons of use cases and hopefully what you could see is you can very quickly and easily build up more complex websites using any of those kind of conditions to match up any of the different triggers you want throughout any of your templates or your pages. So if you tried out dynamic conditions yourself, if you have, what did you think of it? If you haven't, do you think this is something you could see yourself using in the future? If so, how do you envisage using it in the sites that you work on? I've got to be honest, I think it's something a, bit of a, a little bit of a game changer for me because it adds in that functionality that I think is sorely missing from inside Elementor itself. And it's a very, very simple way of implementing it to give us that extra functionality. So is this the plugin that you think you could see yourself using in the future in a project? If it is, how do you think you'd actually implement it? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback on how you can see you could use this in the future moving forward. Speak in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know what you did or didn't enjoy in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say and it helps me get better content together for you moving forward. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below so you can check this plugin out for yourself and give it a try. Well, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.